all kinds of security. They can require physical guards and all, all kinds of stuff. You, you have a big grow operation. I would think that most people with a big operation would want to grow indoors. Mm. And then uh, there probably would be different levels of security for indoor growers, but I didn't get into that. So, uh, so, but if if the town decided, well, we don't want to uh, have a uh, a retail operation. You can't stop a grow operation, but you can stop a retail. Then you can have a town vote, or the select board can say no. Um, there's different ways of doing it, but then I think the only way to really back it up is have a committee to also mm. say no. But um, I I haven't seen where um, retail operations are a problem anywhere. Mm -hmm. Has anybody here seen them? So I know up in Jeffersonville, it seems to be fine. I haven't heard anybody complain about it. Oh, agreed. And it seems like Underhill's a bit of an unlikely place for someone to put yeah, one yeah. compared to Jericho. And then there's the one right in downtown Jobs. So, so it sounds like maybe is your takeaway, Bart, that this really isn't something the Planning Commission needs to spend any time on? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. And and even if even if uh, a group of interested people wanted to to start a board, and the select board would would appoint them, I don't know what they do. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, no power. Is that what you found, Roy? Yeah, same. Pretty much the same thing. You can't you can't the town can't uh, create laws to stop people from growing it if they get a state permit? Is what is, I understood it the same way Bart did, and I don't think the commission like Cambridge has a commission, but they must have uh, created that when they wanted to put a retail store in. So some of the neighbors must have gotten together. I don't know how they, you know, Stowe has one. I, there, there's a bunch of towns around yeah. here who have commissions. So, yeah. uh, but I don't see a, a need for us to do anything really. Uh, Cause it doesn't seem like it could be an issue. Um, okay. I think that sort of takes cannabis off our plate to the extent it ever was on. <laughs> um, so I guess Sandy just kind of, sure. And jumping to the next item, um, you had asked us to dissolve the climate change task force. So I'd put that on just as a administrative thing we could take care of tonight. Is that still, has any change in, on that or you still think we should do that? Yeah, uh, when we finished the uh, climate action plan, it seemed like all the um, the uh, recommendations really came back to the planning commission to review, implement, decide what needs to be done. So um, I don't see that our committee is really needed at this point since it's supposed to be an advisory to the planning commission. Um, so I was suggesting that we dissolve it for now and at some point if um, if we need people's advice again that we uh, form, form the committee again with the same or different people. Does anyone have any objections to doing that? Otherwise I'm happy to make a motion. Okay, um, I would make a motion that uh, thank the Climate Change Committee very much for all their hard work and that amazing report, which we are working our way through. And um, go ahead and move that we dissolve uh, that committee since they've done their work. Is there a second? Thank you, Bart. All in favor? Aye. Um, okay, so it's unanimous. Um, so thank you again to the Climate Change Committee. That's awesome. Um, okay, let me... Feels a little weird to jump to this, but I'm filling time since I don't know if we're gonna have our speaker or not. Uh, that is the only other item I had on our agenda was organizing our holiday party next week. <laughs> so, um, 
I would just say my plan for next week, unless there are any objections, and you are super invited, Karen, <laughs> is um, my plan was to uh, do a one-hour meeting and then have like whatever, however long people want to stay, half hour, 45-minute hour uh, holiday party after that. So maybe everyone could bring... I've put a lot of thought into this. Maybe everyone could bring a little something. Uh, Brad already told me that we can bring wine and beer to town hall as long as the as long as the meeting's officially over. I asked him before this, um, and he told me to make sure that uh, I close the meeting <laughs> before the holiday party. Um, so yeah, if if people are up for it, I thought we'd do a one hour meeting or thereabouts, maybe a little shorter, and then just everyone hang out for a half hour, hour, whatever you want, and just have fun. So, and maybe everyone can bring a little something. That's the plan. All right, cool. Um, Sandy, have you heard from our guest speaker? Okay. Um, it's hard to jump to anything else as an addition to the agenda, to be honest, because David's not here, which was the obvious thing to finish up non-conforming lots. Um, so... I'm honestly not quite sure what to do. Um, what do about if we review what we have in store for <laughs> the next few months? Because I, I sort of forget where we are other than just these. Um, oh, does that bounce back to me? Um, OK, just a minute. <laughs> so as far as speakers go for our let's educate ourselves on resiliency, um, Kurt Johnson has agreed to come on January 4th um, to tell us what he's learned about um, in the realm of transportation resi resiliency. There's some tools and trainings he's been to, and um, so that would be one way for us to get educated is to <laughs> learn what he's already already working on there. Um, and then beyond that, I think uh, we also wanted to get some speakers related to mapping, um, but I don't know uh, who or, you know, what kind of expertise we're looking at. Um, certainly Brad knows a lot, um, but as far as mapping towns, you know, for, for zoning districts. I wonder if there's someone from the League of Cities and Towns that might be able to help us. I could ask Brad about that. Um, actually, we also have, um, and I can't think of his name right now, he used to be on our commission. Um, oh, yeah. Is Christensen, is that? Christian. Christian. Christian, Christian Matthews. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yep. And he's, I believe he's a mapping expert. He, he's a mapping guy for a town in New Hampshire. Are you in touch with him? Would you mind asking him if you? Sure, he... I can ask him. Okay, thank you. So this actually takes me to, um, and I should have thought on this on my own. Unfortunately, I probably repressed it. Unfortunately, the person we approved, we or we didn't approve anything, that we recommended to the select board, and they approved and said, that we should hire as the planning and zoning administrator. We probably already knows this from Charlie, but he took another job. So now we are once again back to square one. So it's, yeah. So it's the first question I asked Brad. The first question I asked Brad was, was it a, a money thing? And it's, it's hard to know because he, took a job that's specific, it's very niche -y. It's a job specifically dealing only with wastewater, which kind of touches more on his background. So Brad said he wasn't sure it was a money thing. So that's a hard thing to address, but at the same time, we're having a hard time hiring someone. So anyway, Brad's thinking about that aspect of it because that's the first question I asked to Lee, right? It's tempting to think that's the reason. Oh, you should, you should, sorry, you should have to uh, take the mic off. Yeah. There, there's a period of time that's lapsing between the applicant and twice now we've approved to move them forward to the select board. 
and then there's a process that seems to occur afterwards that is taking way too long. So the vetting process is part of it, and then the lack of quick response from the town in return. I did say that to Brad as well, because as you all know, because you were there, we did a special meeting like immediately and recommended him. And then I'll, I'll mention it to Brad again. Part of it is just this process because they have to get him on the next select board meeting. And But yeah, I don't disagree with him. <laughs> So, um, um, Frost, uh, Tim, thank you. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Tim. Um, Tim asked, well, don't we vet them ahead of time? You know, when I hire somebody, and we were told that Jennifer does that ahead of time. And then when I asked Brad after the select board meeting, what happened? And he said, well, we're reviewing his references. Well, why didn't you review that ahead of time? You know, if you're vetting him, why aren't you reviewing that? So the process of the applicant coming in for the application, it's not like a, it's a job they're going to hang on there and wait and hope they get. because we're. So the longer we take, the less chance we have of actually getting somebody. No, I 110% agree with you. So let me ask Brad if we can... I'll specifically mention that. And then also, you know, the other thing is the select board maybe could do a special meeting between cycles to just to interview. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree that it takes a long time. So let me specifically mention the background stuff to Brad. I'm, I'm writing that down. I also think that uh, the, the, the salary seems to be a little low because if you, I agree. The people who are going to take this position are ha, usually have a master's degree, and I think the last time I they posted it was fifty two thousand or something like that. And I'm thinking, who with a master's degree is going to come work in a little town for fifty two thousand when they could go to Burlington or somewhere like that and probably make eighty thousand or some? I I don't know how much people make in those positions, but it doesn't seem like much to me. So let me tell you, Lee, can you hit your, um, Brad told me to make sure to tell anyone not to turn it on and off from feedback perspective. Um, here's what Brad would tell you, if channeling my Brad Holden if you were sitting here, because we've had this discussion. Um, he would say that we, we ha I don't remember the numbers, unfortunately, but we have this match for retirement too that adds money to it. He would also say that Underhill is, unlike most towns, Underhill pays 100% of the medical benefits, which sounds to me like a really strong perk. And Brad said it's atypical, and that's one of the main attractions. He also told me, because I specifically asked him this too, that there's a survey. I want to see maybe Vermont Weeks Cities and Towns does it, but I, I'm probably misquoting there. And that it, what we're offering is the is like the average, supposedly, I don't know if there's lag time on these surveys or I'm not an expert, but it is supposedly the average compensation for this job. All that being said, we're having a hard time hiring someone. So yeah, Lee. Average pay for zoning admin or an average pay for planning zoning? Cause they do both. I it's, a, it's two jobs. Yeah, 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 I don't, I don't, good question. And, I don't know the answer. I've been, def you know, I've been deferring to Brad on um, all that stuff. So I will ask him though. I would say um, average pay is is sh it should be considered if it's the whole state of Vermont because that position down south or out east, the north northeast kingdom or something, um, it's a lot cheaper to live than those places. Yeah, but. That is impossible to disagree with, Boris. <laughs> yeah. So I think the big problem of this, and the reason I brought it up here when Sandy had brought up this discussion point is, I think this is a major factor in what our agenda is going to look like. And the reason is I called Brad to ask him about some of the stuff we've passed already, like the trails regulations. Um, 
and some of the stuff that's sitting with the law with the lawyer like adus etc like when can we actually get those sort of passed like should we put those in town meeting day and um he said he thought maybe we should put them in the next primary election it could like go in the ballot or the general which is i guess august obviously the election is november but i think he said the primary was august or something like that but brad would prefer to send a bunch of stuff through together which i get but it's really hard with no planning and zoning administrator to sort of go through i don't know if you guys all agree with that but i think it's very challenging to go through like all the regulations and put together one comprehensive thing without a planning and zoning administrator so um what we want to structure the beginning of next year to look like besides speakers is um a very good question and not having a planning and zoning administrator and i'm sure nothing's going to happen in december let's be honest mm -hmm. so like yeah do we want to go back and start working our way through or are there other topics that we want to just target and then i can bug brad about maybe like packaging up eight or nine things and sending those through in the next packet uh, or next vote whenever that is but um yeah it's a really good question sandy and um not having a pza has sort of thrown off i think what our plan was so the question is do we just want to take that process back and start working our way through the whole zoning regs like we sort of had originally started doing with Nick, or do we want to do more targeted things like we've been doing with ADUs and non-conforming lots? And wait, I, I don't think it hurts any of us to get better informed about our regulations. Sure. One, I, I think that still reviewing them is a really good idea. The other things regarding like accessory dwelling units, structure, you know, accessory dwellings, some of those things we were we are required to address because of state regulations. So I don't know if we need a planning zoning person for those things that we have worked on already. I, I agree. That's the ADUs, just to be clear, are sitting with the town lawyer, all our changes. And I asked Brad last week to bug the lawyer to see if. I, if you're going to ask who it is, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, I, Brad just always says town lawyer, and I, uh, I say, I, and I've not, yeah, I don't know who it is. Um, but I will, I will ask Brad again about doing that. If you said the name, I might. Oh, that does sound familiar. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I will follow back up with Brad because I'm guess what we're going to have more. I mean, it'd be great if everything we sent over, they were like, oh, this is perfect, but that's probably not right. So we might have a little follow-up work to do on the stuff we've already sent over too. But I mean, what are people's thoughts? Do we want to start to, starting our first meeting in January, just kind of dig out that big thick book of regulations again? Well, maybe what we do, sorry for the real time thinking. I wonder if we pull out the big book of regulations and start a, instead of just flipping pages for every sentence like we had started doing, do we flip through and try to take a meeting and pull out topics that we think we wanna hit or do we wanna literally start flipping pages? Thoughts? Yeah, well, you have to come up to the, yeah. <laughs> I have a suggestion, um, and that would be going through the um, points that the Development Review Board reviews, like its checklist, to make sure that everyone understands what they mean and whether they need some changes. <laughs> yes. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Do you have that checklist, or else we could bug Charlie for it? Obviously, we know where to find them. Uh, yeah, we, we do have that checklist. Do you want me to see if I can get one and get it back to you? So yeah. that'll save you from doing a lot of, that'll yeah. save you from doing. If you don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. So maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do that. And that is actually a good, with Karen saying that, so the other, the other approach we could take here, which might be the right one is to get that checklist. And we have the list Charlie gave us uh which is a big list 
of things that have come up over time that the DRB has noticed. I, I seem to think, remember it was like 50 things. <laughs> um, we could start working our way through that and using that as a, I'm sure other things will come up as we go through. I don't know if I'm saying this well. I think that would probably flesh out other things as we go through it. That could be our framework for a couple months worth of work, I'm sure. Uh, my concern is that we start it and then we get sidetracked, which has happened significantly. Mm -hmm. So I would like to dedicate some point portion of the meeting every time just to say, here we are with this. This is what we're looking at. But we get shoved back. We keep getting shoved back. And that's like, it was a good idea for us to sit and look at the regulations and read them through. And then Charlie Van Winkle did come in and go over points. And Karen has mentioned them too. And we make their job a lot easier if we understand what we're asking for. No, I, I totally agree. So I think what we would do, I guess what I'm proposing as we flush this out is what we had been doing, because I thought, it made the meetings more interesting for everyone if we took like an hour and i think we stuck by this for a while if we took an hour and kind of did a long-term project and that was to slowly work our way through every page of the regs and then take a half an hour and work on shorter term stuff whether it's adus or whatever so maybe what we do to what you're saying lee is if we take I think the first meeting would just be getting organized, getting Charlie's list and getting the checklist. And, um, but maybe we make, what well, I guess what I'm proposing is we would make going through that list and the checklist our long-term project. So we would take an hour of every meeting or maybe more depending upon what else is going on. And we'd sort of start to work our way through that. And then if there's other things that we needed to filter in, um, we could um, take, you know, the last half hour of the meeting and do it. But that way we would always be taking the first hour of the meeting to work our way through the combination of the checklist and Charlie's list for a couple months or whatever, however long it took. I'm guessing by doing that exercise, we would actually hit a ton of the regulations as we went. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, does anyone object to that? plan does that feel i mean housing is the biggest topic for sure and it will hit on a lot of the climate stuff so so those would kind of be the two things we were doing we would do we would be doing working through the drb list and working through the climate change stuff with that sandy has speakers and stuff coming in on those would, and we would do those two things in parallel that is my proposal what do people think it's a good framework, I think. It would keep us busy. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lee. So that is our master plan for 2024. Uh, <laughs> we will work on Charlie's list slash checklist for the DRB. And we will also, and I feel like these things, things are so intertwined. We will also work on the climate change stuff, the meaning speakers and whatever else flushes out of that. Um, and Bart is going to reach out to Christian and we have Kurt for January 4th, you said. So, okay. That feels like a plan. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Did you hear back from our guest speaker, Sandy? I have not heard back. So I, I am at a loss. I don't, I talked to her earlier this week, so something must have happened. So, um, we're certainly not prepared to do our organizational meeting that we just discussed, which is because we need to look at Charlie's list and get the checklist. I need to super refresh myself on Charlie's list. I mean, unless anyone has anything else, probably just do a short meeting unless anyone has any other agenda items. And we reschedule our guest speaker. Oh, we went through that before you got in. Sorry, Lee. The sh no, the long and short of it is there's nothing for us to do, basically. Um, that's a horrible summary, but Bart, Bart can fill you in. <laughs> um, do I, I, I apologize, Michael and Karen. There's Unless either one of you has anything, I think we're just rescheduling this speaker. Um, and... Um, yeah, I don't want to just fill airtime, so I, it's hard to sort of go on the fly. So, um, I guess motion to adjourn, unless anyone has anything else.
I will I will make the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Bart, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everybody.